In this video, we're going to learn how to use the rep function in R. Now, what rep does is it takes a first argument and then repeats it a specified number of times. So in this first example, we're just going to use rep to repeat the number zero 10 times. So to do that, we're going to call rep. The first argument is what we're repeating. In this case, we're just going to repeat a single value, zero, and then comma, the next argument is the number of repetitions. Then we're just going to store it in a variable called 10 zeros and print it out. You can see that we've created a vector with 10 zeros in it. Now you can also repeat things that are not just single values, but things like other vectors. So if you wanted to repeat an existing vector a certain number of times, you could do that too. So we'll show how to do that. We'll start with this vector of three integers, one, two, three. But what if we want to repeat that sequence many times and then store that in a new vector? Well, we can do that with rep two. All we have to do is call rep again, pass in that vector of three ints, and we'll repeat that 10 times. We'll save that and print it. So you can see that we've managed to repeat that three length vector 10 times resulting in 30 values. Now it's also possible to repeat other things like lists. And since data frames are actually built from lists, you can also repeat columns in a data frame. So we're going to load the first five columns of the empty cars data set and then just repeat them once. To do that, we're going to just take that data, say rep on that data frame. We're going to do two repetitions just to double it. And I believe that running rep on a data frame like this will convert it into a normal list. So I'm just wrapping that whole call in data dot frame so we can turn it back into a data frame to print out. So running that, we can see that we do have a data frame with 10 columns. So we have the first five columns like we'd expect, but since we had two repetitions, we had one, and then they were all repeated again. And you can see that the column names are automatically given this extra indicator just to make them different names than the other columns because you can't have columns that have the same name. And this might not be something that is going to be used too often, but I just wanted to show that you can use rep on lists and data frames as well as vectors. But I find the most useful way to use rep most of the time is for populating empty vectors prior to storing values in them. And I'll give you an example of why this is so good because it can speed up your code a lot. Think of wanting to populate a vector with a bunch of values that you might be generating in some kind of for loop. Well, one, t one way you could do that is initializing an empty vector like this. We'll call it empty slow, just with an empty vector. So right now it has nothing in it. Then we're just going to do a for loop looping through a bunch of values. And all this is going to do is simply store each of these values in this empty vector by extending it every time. So this is the way you basically extend a, an existing vector. You say concatenate C, the old vector, the empty one with this new value we want to store in. So all this for loop is doing is just taking this em empty vector and then iteratively storing every single value from one to 100,000 in it over and over again by extending it. And we're just going to time how long that takes and print it out. So let's do this. And I might actually skip forward in the video a little bit because this might take a while. So the code finished running and we can see that it took almost 12 seconds to do that, which is a pretty long time for doing an operation that's only 100,000 long. Well, how could we speed something like this up? Well, one way we could do that is by initializing an empty vector with rep ahead of time and then storing all of our values into that existing vector using indexing instead of extending the vector over and over again. So instead of starting with something empty and having to extend it many, many times, we can start with something that has something in it, just placeholder values, but it's the appropriate length. So it's not an empty vector. It's something that we can just slot things into and that will speed up the code. So we'll give an example of doing that. Instead of starting with an empty vector, we'll say empty fast. And for this one, we're going to initialize it with rep. So we're gonna repeat zero 100,000 times. So we have something to slot values into quickly using indexing. And then we're just going to do essentially the same thing. We're going to do a for loop over 100,000 values. But instead of having to extend the vector every time, we're just going to slot the value directly into the existing vector using indexing. And let's just run this to see how long it takes versus the other method. 
So that ran really fast. So you can see that this only took 0.2 seconds to store those 100,000 values in the for loop. And it was over 500 times faster than it was doing it the other way. So even though you generally aren't going to want to be doing tons of for looping in R if you can avoid it, this shows that it might not actually be all that slow if you can initialize a data structure like a vector first with something simple like rep and then use indexing to store values instead of having to extend something a whole bunch of times. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like or hit subscribe. And thanks for watching.